for the handicap rugby chat that matters. We're going to be talking rugby. We're going to be talking rugby betting, in particular the Curry Cup final. We'll also touch on the Meter 10 Cup, as well as some of the international rugby taking place this week. Before we do anything else, if you are new to the channel, please do go down below, hit the subscribe button, whack the bell, and make sure you get notified of all of our videos. We're going to have a, an entertaining weekend ahead. I can tell you there's a couple of guys sitting on 14 to 1 both away teams win the Curry Cup after the GG Gaming God Mad Show, which was a great fun. We had that at Half Boss 8, of course, every Thursday night. Let's introduce the panel, though, starting off uh, with one of our stalwarts uh, since the show started probably about a year ago. It's Henrik Swat. Henrik, good to have you on the show. Hi, Brent. Yeah, nice to be back. Um, Greek was let us down last week. It was a close one. They, they started badly, but, yeah, I had a pretty big bet on that. But the uh, other two games went... Um, the way I thought. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this week. A bit less rugby, but, yeah, there's a few nationals as well. And then the Mighty 10 Cup has been a gold mine, like always. So I'm really looking forward to a few games of the New Zealand games as well this weekend. You guys have been going really well in the Mighty 10 Cup. And I must say, look, I've, I've followed the odd one. I've been a bit busy to, to play most of them. And I started off really well, but I think it was the Canterbury-Wellington game where I got involved and I got absolutely hammered on Canterbury points and that sort of stuff. So you just got to look and choose. But I see, generally speaking, yourself, the likes of Three Pete in the forum, Gerard on the show we'll get to now, have been in cracking form in the Mighty 10 Cup. And uh, I'm just mentioning, of course, maybe I just want to go to Kimberley with those awaiting. But just to mention, the guys who watch GG Gaming uh, go mad live got the option to get 14 to 1 instead of sort of 8, 9 to 1 about the two away teams winning this weekend. So uh, Henrik was amongst those. Sean also also took it as well. So uh, that, that, that was pretty good stuff. Let's go to Gerard, though, and welcome him to the show. Gerard, you've been in cracking form. Looking to continue it this weekend? Hi, hi Brent. Yeah, thanks. Uh, uh, some up and downs uh, last week with Canterbury. Uh, I think we're all on the same page. It was a terrible game. Um, and they let us down badly. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just a shame Greek was didn't pitch up in that first 30 odd minutes. Um, uh, otherwise, we would have been smiling all the way this week. That's for sure. Nico just mentioning he feels sick after Western Province blew a 33 12 lead. And Nico, I didn't watch the game. I had my son's sevens tournament last week, so I didn't get too involved in the betting either. Um, but I remember seeing. Uh, Western Province well clear and going. I should have listened to Nico on the show. He told me get on Western Province, and then I saw the final result, and I was obviously quite relieved that I didn't. But there's also um, Gerard. Aside from the Curry Cup, of course, Mighty Ten Cup this weekend. Some internationals. You got any fancies? You don't have to go into them yet. We'll get to them, but I presume you got a few nice, nice bets last lady in the show. Yes, there's there's a couple of nice ITM Cup uh, games. Uh, I think uh, especially one or two that's quoted too low. Um, and then I, I, yeah, this uh, one international I like. Um, the others, I, I'm not quite sure. I check the teams, and it looks like a mix and match. Um, and these friendlies are so difficult to call. Um, luckily, last week Scotland game came through for us. That was also pretty close. After that uh, intercept try, and then the, the second French try, I thought, yeah, it's gone as yeah. Um, but yeah, they came back pretty well. Excellent. Well, just welcome to all the guys on the live chat, including Han Dumont. Last week, he, he he couldn't make the show because he was working. And I think because he did a, a day's work, he's recovering now. So he's just sitting in the live chat, keeping an eye. Welcome to Fat Exorcist, a blue fan who's relocating to Joburg soon. Good to have you on the show. And welcome to all the guys on the live chat. Look forward to your contributions as we go through the show. But let's start on the Curry Cup. And uh, Hera, I'll start with you. In the in the first semi final. we've got the Golden Lions against Griquas. Griquas last week, they fell behind early. They came back. They took the lead. Unfortunately, a late penalty Blew them off top spot in the log. They only finished third. They now face a trip away to the Lions. And I see, I don't know, I haven't had a good look around. I've just popped onto Sunbet and I see minus eight and a half the Lions. Close to where I handicapped the game, but I've, I've got to feel there might be a bit of value. The Greek was there. Yeah, Brent, uh, I, I don't know who all saw the news this morning uh, of Brent, the answer for Rensburg, that actually quitted as, as Greek was coach. Um, yes. And that's that's pretty pretty sad for them. I mean, yes, give the guy another year, and I would have liked to see Greek West this time uh, next year. I, I think you would have done some more magic um, with that team. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit unfortunate, but hopefully the guys will get up and play for him, and he's uh, hopefully not his last game in charge. Um, I actually like that plus the handicap uh, a lot, Brent. Uh, I, I think the Greek West. Uh, I, I firmly believe that they should have won that game last week. Uh, I really don't know how they lost that. Um, and I, I really like the eight and a half. 
Um, I think they have the forwards to to, to really punish the the Lions up front, um, and then yeah, they have quality a quality back three that's pretty quick. Um, so I, I really hope they come through for this, and I, I think there should be some points. Obviously, again, it's three a, a three o'clock game on Alice Park um, and or Emirates Park. Um, and it's it's again Lions Greek was so there should be some points. I haven't seen any point points lines as yet, um, but I'm, I'm I actually quite like the the eight and a half, the plus eight and a half on Greek was. Excellent, yeah. Well, actually, uh, I'll be this weekend is my annual trip with a family to Dickalol or just outside Brits, and it's always great because Saturday afternoon we go to the pub and we watch whatever rugby's on. Sometimes it's test matches that used to be Tri Nations rugby champs. And I've had some great wins there over the years, like spread betting wins and that. Where I've ended up buying the whole pub around the drinks. It was the one Curry Cup final thing. I mean, I must say, that's faint in the memory because I haven't had wins like that for a bloody long time. But it certainly means I'll be getting involved. And uh, the only strange thing is all my cousins, we all originally from the Cape. Um, they always used to love it when Western Province played. But, of course, Heinz Western Province won't be playing this weekend. Uh, and, and let's bring Henrik in here there because the Greek was must have a chance of riding the Lions, Henrik. I went last week. I labelled the uh, the Greek was the, one of the best bets of the year, and uh, I was let down. But yeah, after going down 19-0, um, and yeah, I, I still feel if they scored that first try, the, the one they blew, that the guy knocked on with the open try line, and then after that they had the intercept try go against them. They came back well, but I think if they started um, with the first try, and they would have. Um, uh, dictated things and uh, would have um, dictated the, dictated the game, but they came well uh, and back well from that. From 19 no, um I think they played great. This is a away game for them, but I think they would have learned from this. And I really rate Brent Janssen for it, but very highly, like you guys know, the, the followers on the show will know how much I've talked about him. Um, I, I don't think um, the announcement that he's leaving the, the um, the Greek West will have such a big effect. Um, the guys will be ready for this game. And I, I'm not even going to take the plus. I'm just going to take the Greek West to win the game. Because Greek West plus is the best bet of the weekend, but I'm not going to bother with the plus. I'm just taking them to win the game. I'm very confident that Greek West will win this game. The Lions, they've, they've been better than I expected. But I'm sure um, Brent would have um, done good week, work this week, and I'm, I'm very confident that the Greek West will win this game. What do you think of Hein's comment there, the blonde Manus, the blonde mop? I know he's not your favourite player, Manus Kuman. I've always considered him a bit of a walking penalty. His friend, that guy, he he never, ever supports his body weight at the breakdown. The refs just give him the penalty on his reputation for some reason. The commentators love him. Every single commentator love, loves him. I think I, I don't rate him. I think he's a poor flanker. He somehow gets away with his ceiling and living, like um, some guys would say. So yeah, well, and and because he's so um, stingy, he scores tries. So that so I might be onto something. And I know I like him as a try scorer, but I'm not a fan. I, I I can't wait for him to go overseas or, or retire so I can be less annoyed when watching Lions games. <laughs> <laughs> so we really got Henrik Stern up on that one. Kevin Turner just mentioned Brent Janssen and Renwick will be do well at the Sharks. Lots of talk that he's going to the Sharks. Carrot, have you seen any confirmation of that? Is that confirmed at this point? I haven't seen any confirmation, but it's that uh, same old tippy toeing around the uh, conversations that you you know what's going to happen. He's most probably going to get a get the uh, the Super Rugby job uh, that he wants, and, and the Sharks need someone to coach them after Robert Dupree. So, and I don't think Sean Everett is is, is that is the same quality of coach. Um, so yeah, uh, they they're, they're going to be happy. They're going to get a good coach, and I think we all should actually be. Pretty happy for him as well. Um, it's a good move, good for his career, um, and uh, for the same of all good rugby players that move on to greener pastures. I think with coaches these days, it's a profession, obviously as well. So you need to move on if you get the opportunity. Sure, that's a you can't stand in the way of his career. Okay, okay let's say I, I say shocks to win the Super Rugby next year then. Yes. <laughs> oh, I like it. I wonder what's the odds on that. <laughs> <laughs> about yeah, not, a bad, I mean, not a bad idea, Henrik. Just on that note, I mean, if you're a punter, you follow certain, you might follow certain players in golf or tennis or whatever. I mean, if you're looking at rugby, you might want to follow certain coaches. A guy like Eddie Jones, for example, you could take a view on him and follow him. And I mean, I gather that that's where you've got Brady Hans van Rensburg, is wherever he goes next, you're going to be looking, especially in the early stages, if you're expecting him to make a big impact. 
Definitely, Brent. Um, some coaches I just follow them blind. They gave a guy like um, Dave Remy, who used to coach the Chiefs. He coaches Glasgow Warriors, and I just always with the Pro, pro 14, I go for Glasgow because he coaches them. Eddie Jones, I'm a big Eddie Jones fan. Um, lots of coaches like that. I, I actually, when, when it gets to rugby, I, I rate coaches higher than, than players, and coaches can get great teams from no, like nobody players. So I, 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 coaching is everything for me in rugby. So I have a, a, a high regard for coaches for coaching. I have to say, if, if you like points lines, you can follow his teams as well. They actually do from from Pumas to to the Greek ones. You can uh, if you like over on points, then you need to follow Brent Jansen for Redsburg. Um, his teams do play a, 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 a great brand of rugby. So either way, if you if you, if you don't like the team, the Sharks now just watch them next year. Sorry, Brent. Sorry for, for that. Durban is just tough for points, so that will be a, a difficult one. Yeah, that's actually a good point. You know, I don't know. Managing yeah. a team in Durban, you may have to change your style a bit. Uh, the, the humidity there and that sort of stuff. But anyway, I like you, Henrik. I rate the guy very highly, and I'll certainly be, I'll certainly be having a, a look at how I can follow him wherever he goes, and, and more than likely to the Sharks. Gents, let's go on then to the next game, the second semi final. It's, of course, the Cheetahs up against the Sharks. Now, Henrik, I haven't been following this too closely all week, but it looks to me as though there might have been just a bit of money for the Sharks here. I think they were plus five and a half early in the week. I see now at Sunbet plus three and a half. I don't know if there's been any other movement, but I'm getting a, a lot of sentiment, a lot of feeling that the money's coming for the visitors. It looks like there's been money for the Sharks, and the Sharks, they, they were impressive last week in um, in um, Pretoria at Loftus, and the week before that, beating the Lions at home because the Lions, they, they've been a bit better than, than expected. Um, no, I, I'm also on the Sharks here. I'll take the plus, and I think they can win the game. I, I give them a good shot, but um, I, I've got a long-term interest in the Cheetahs, so I won't mind the Cheetahs making the final. Um, but yeah, I'm on the Sharks here. I'm a bit, a bit concerned that Kevin Bosch is back. He, he's missed two weeks of rugby, and um, Buddha Chamberlain has been good um, the last two weeks. So, yeah, but, but obviously, um, Sean Everett going for the experience um, of, of Kevin Bosch in the semi final, that makes sense. So, yeah, I'm not as confident as I am on request, but I'm on the plus here on the shots, and I think they might win the game. Excellent. Just to mention to you guys, we're coming to that exciting part of the show where my sound normally starts playing up some Akuzuma Wi Fi. If so, I will, I will try and get back on the 3G. So, just to let you guys know that in advance. Gerard, let's go to you for that game. The Cheetahs up against the Sharks. I've been, uh, most of the season, as the season's gone along, I've quite fancied the Cheetahs to make a big run at the Curry Cup. But I, but I do also like Henrik, just have this feeling that the Sharks can do it this weekend. Yes, I tend to agree with you guys. Um, uh, I know like the Cheetahs are uh, starting a better front row uh, this week than last week. Um, but with Kuni back and, and Thomas the Toy and Andre Esterheisen just gives them that extra little bit of experience and punch. Um, so I also like the, the Sharks on the plus. I'm, I'm definitely not as confident on the Sharks plus as, as the, the, the Greek West plus. Um, it, I, I don't know. I I'm also one of those people that can't believe the Western Province lost that game last week from that far ahead. I, but I think it's more a fact of Western Province being absolutely shit. And not really the and not really the free state just playing out of their skins. It's maybe a combination of, of both, but I think it's more the Western Province just being shit. So, um, yeah, I also like the plus. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a little bit scary when Joseph Dwebe gets the ball. Uh, I wouldn't tackle him, I'll just let him run past and jump on his back or something. So, um, he, he's definitely a, a good one to watch out for try scorer. Um, yeah. I, I think he'll definitely get over. And what do you think of just mentioning in the live chat there, Brendan Vessel's mentioning uh, Fassi, who I thought had a belter of a game last week. He's really good. I also want to say, like, like Henrik, I thought the fly half uh, Chamberlain was excellent. You know, he looks he looks a young talent. He's got a mighty boot on him. And and that uh, the scrummy number nine as well played played excellently. Some good talent coming up there. But uh, you've got to think that that guy's a future bock, eh? Yeah, I, I like Noamba, the, 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 the scrum off. Uh, a guy that comes in in, in your first season of, of Curry Cup uh, rugby and you uh, actually... Want to take the responsibility of kicking the balls as well. Um, it's brilliant to see. Um, so 
Yes, uh, that will be. I, 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 I think now Amba is also. If he can keep this up in Super Rugby, he'll also be part of that box squad when Reinach goes back and Faf de Clare goes back. Um, so yeah, I, I like him, and he's obviously very young as well. Uh, unfortunate for the Chamberlain, uh, he's done nothing wrong. He's, he hasn't put a foot wrong in his two games. Um, so yeah, it's a little, little bit of harsh call, but Kevin uh, Bosch is is the first choice fly off so you would assume you will just slot back in um but yeah that, that's a little bit of a risk um but yeah looking forward to seeing uh more with the chamberlain and Noamba in the super rugby season next year there's some well hand who loves his a last try score and first try score a bit he's saying that Salah there to score the last try because well if he had cheaters by one to twelve and uh just thanking Henrik for his uh, tip on the counties this morning. Henrik is on fire in the in the Mitre 10 Cup. But uh Hein, if you uh, well, you are watching. I know you're also focusing on the Volta. So just post us a winner for tomorrow's Volta stage. I gave you Herada today at 22 to 1. Let's see if you could pop up with something on tomorrow's stage. Bosch to win it with a 60-minute penalty at the death. That's what Hein thinks there. Henrik, let me just come to you quickly. As far as total points lines that go in this curry cup match. Uh, have you done? Uh, I know you haven't looked deep into it yet, but is this the sort of game we should be looking for a, a 33 30 outcome to the Sharks, perhaps? Now, Brent, um, do you guys know who the ref is here? I, I haven't done a lot of um, homework. Let me just quickly check. I think um, another one is Jadis Weni, and the other one is um, Oya Jacobs. Okay, it's Oya Jacobs. Yeah, he's a good overs ref for Bloom. Um, and yeah, the, the Last week's game be between the, uh, the um, Cheetahs and the province was very high scoring and the, the Sharks played a nice game away from home. Um, they, they always seem to score much more points away from home um, than Adam. So if we can get a, a quote, even with it being a semi, if we can get a quote of under 60 points, I, I think over should be the way to go. Yeah, and Brent, I know you um, also have that... Um, you, you believe in that that that, that a semi or final is not no, necessarily close games or, or uh, under games necessarily. The teams still play around, so yeah, I I think overs is the way to go here with both these teams. There's exciting players and there's young players, very exciting players in both teams. So overs, um, if the quote is less than sixty. Excellent. Well, Carol, anything to add on the Curry Cup? Just to mention, true to form, nine sixteen came round. My sound is going to disappear for a sec. And hopefully come back. But Kerr, anything more on the Curry Cup before we talk about the meter 10? No, I'm okay. Thanks, Brent. Excellent. Well, I'm going to leave you guys on Henrik. Let me start with you there on the meter 10 Cup. The two of you just have a, a bit of a chat amongst yourselves there on, on what you fancy. I'm just going to try and disconnect and come back on my 3G with a bit of luck. I won't be gone wrong. Okay. Uh, Barrett, I'm going to just run through all the games um, on my site and then you can go off to me. So tomorrow morning, it's Otago against uh, Manawatu. Um, yeah, the Manawatu, they really struggled, and I don't rate them this year between them and Southland, they, they're the poor, two poorest teams. Um, it's a shield game, it's under the roof, um, I'm going for Otago. The handicap started at about 11 and a half, I see it's up to 15 and a half. Um, I see Otago beating this handicap easily, they will win by 20 plus. This is the best bet on the Mighty 10 Cup this week on the handicaps. Minus 15 and a half for Targo. If you can get minus 14 and a half, I got some minus 14 and a half this afternoon still at Sporting Bet. I'm not sure whether it's still available, but I suggest you guys go take the minus on the Targo. Canterbury Southland, a, a two o'clock kickoff in New Zealand um, on Saturday afternoon, for about 4 30 in the morning hour time on Saturday. Um, Canterbury, they've been very disappointed, a bit disappointing. They lost against Wellington, and Wellington scraped home against Counties this morning. Um, Canterbury, they are crap this year. You can take them on every game. I, I can't understand why this handicap has gone up. It started about 34 and a half. I see it's up to 38 and a half now. Um, take the plus here on, on Southland, and take the half-time plus on Southland. Southland, they normally start um, very well in the first half. And um, then I see there's points lines out for this one as well. Um, take the overs on, on Southland. There's over five and a half or over six and a half are available. They will score at least one try. I think they will score two tries. So the overs on Southland points is a good uh, one. Um, yeah. And then Northland uh, against Hawks Bay. Hawks Bay has been brilliant um, with Asterix Dixon, the scoring tries for Gerard. Um, he, he 
game through last week. So, yeah, I think Hawks, Hawks Bay, uh, minus seven, minus eight, eight about. I think they will win by double figures. Waikato, Auckland. This game, I would have made a choice with Waikato being at home. Uh, with Fletcher Smith and Quinta Pyra, um led them so far. They've been playing, play, playing brilliantly. I see that he captured about four or five. Take the plus here. Um, Waikato has to have a chance to win this game. This is one of, one of my... Um, I, I, I fancy all the games really strongly, but this is one of the, the lower fancies from my side. And then um, North Auburn, they have plenty. They have plenty has been brilliant. Um, I see the underdogs here. Yeah, I don't know why. Auburn, Auburn is all, they have all the players, but they've been a bit overrated. They actually struggled a bit, and I've expected more from them. So I, I'll take the Bay of Plenty to win this game. And then Tasman, they won't lose again this year. Taranaki is overrated because they, was, they, they were a premiership team last year. Take Tasman to win this one. Take the minus 12 and a half. Tasman will, will win this by more than 20. Tarot, what's your take? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Uh, I, I also like the Otago. Uh, I think I'm also one of those that got on at 11 and a half. Um, the handicap on 11 and a half. Um, and I do agree with you. Vanuatu is, is really a poor, poor team. Um, and the Targa, obviously, with Jaws only also back for them. Uh, it's it's awesome for their team. Um, I like that the nine ten combo they have currently. Um, and then you have the the sevens players at the back that that's going to score heaps of tries. Um, I also like the fact that this game is being played under the roof, so it's going to be fast. Um, and the Manawatu, the only the only way they got, actually they had a chance to win was against Taranaki in the absolute swamp. Um, the other day that they lost 10-13, um, so they're not going to like a, a quick game. So I like I like the 11 and a half, uh, and I'll still take the 15 and a half. That's still available. I still think also it will be at least 20. Um, and then obviously Canterbury Southland. I think Canterbury must be the, the biggest disappointment this year. I think for all the people in New Zealand that follow rugby, and for all of us, and normally they are pretty. A pretty nice team to back for points and handicaps and everything because they do deliver more often than not. And this year they've just been shot. Um, there's no other words for it. Their, their game against Wellington was one of the worst games I've ever seen from a Canterbury team. Um, and I don't think it's going to change that quickly. Um, so, yeah, that plus 38 and a half uh, is very close to Golden. I, I can't see how they're going to win that far. Um, it will take something very special for that to happen. Um, and then, yeah, at, at the Southland points, uh, the, we spoke about this. Um, I, I also like the Southland points. I think they're going to get a penalty very early, and they are one of the teams that actually do kick to poles when they get penalties. A lot of teams just go for lineouts. They will kick to poles, and they will get an early three points, and hopefully then one try at least will just, just sneak in for that um, over seven and a half. Um, yeah, then... Um, I also like Waikato. Uh, last weekend, uh, Quintapaya didn't play, but they were still pretty, pretty good. Um, so I hope he's back this weekend. I haven't seen the Waikato team. Um, I hope he's back, and I, I actually do rate Fletcher Smith as a as a fly off. I like him. He, he's he's an awesome goal kicker. I don't think he's, he's missed a kicker goal um, so far the whole season. So yeah, and that's obviously pretty special. Um, so yeah, I, I like him, and then Quintapaya. To maybe score a try in that match as well. He's one of the potent try scorers. He, he does get the ball quite often near the line. Um, and then, yeah, obviously, uh, the, the North Harbour, they have plenty. They have plenty. I've, uh, I actually underrated them at the start of the season um, and actually overrated uh, North Harbour. Um, North, North Harbour has a, has, a, has a good back line, but it looks like their forwards is, is really uh, not worth a lot. Um, I also like that Bay of Plenty. Uh, it's quite scary. We actually have a lot of things that we do, <laughs> do agree upon. So that's, it's, it, uh, it just feels wrong. So, uh, yeah, I, I like the Bay of Plenty there. And then what can you say about Tasman? Uh, Liam Squire didn't make the World Cup squad. He's just going to bully the poor Taranakis up front uh, on Sunday. Um, and they will cover that. Uh, I think it, you posted that earlier in the week on, on the forum that they will win by 20. Uh, yeah, I, I do agree with that. At least 20. It might be something closer to 30, maybe. Um, and then, uh, yeah, obviously the, the Hawks Bay game I skipped because uh, 
No, I think that the Hawks by minus seven and a half looks very, very decent. Uh, it's away from home against Northland, and Northland is also not. They actually had the same type of record that Southland now has, like 24 or 25 or something losses in a row prior to, I think, a year and a half ago, where they actually stopped winning a couple of games. And then obviously Ash Dixon to, to score. He's going to score. And it's going to happen. Um, just stay on it. It's like that uh, Fainga from the Brumbies. He will be at the back of the mall. Um, and hopefully he doesn't shift the ball to one of its flankers. Um, and, and we'll get a try on, on Ash Dixon. So... Yeah, it's quite scary. I think we do agree on, on all of the points. Um, so either either we're going to be smiling in a week's time or there's going to be a whole heap of tears. <laughs> yeah. the, the thing, the thing I, I, my feeling on the mic, I think, Cup is the four molds are better than in the Carrick Cup. So, yeah, it's not always a good thing when we agree on everything, but I think it's, with the Mike at 10 Cup, it's all right because, yeah, I... I, I that's always been my feeling. The form is much better than in the Carrick Cup. Brent, I see you back. I'm back. Hey. Can you believe it? I was trying to get connected to my 3G. Then I came back on the Wi-Fi. I still couldn't hear anything properly, and realised I didn't have the personal hotspot on the on the on the on the iPad. So now I'm back. So um, yeah, I can hear you guys loud and clear now. But I'm going to tell you that I missed the entire Mighty Ten Cup conversation. Other than what Kerat said in the end, and all I heard was Kerat say, "We agree on everything this week." So I can tell you what I'm doing straight off to the show. As soon as I'm, loaded, I'm watching a replay to see what you boys fancy there in the Mighty Ten Cup. Perhaps just to summarise for for my sake, perhaps if no one else's, what are your best bets then on the Mighty Ten Cup, Kerat? Um, Otago, uh, I, I like Otago definitely. Um, it's I think it's currently at 15 and a half. Um, and then uh, Tasman, uh, geez, I think that's I think it's 12 and a half now. Um, Tasman uh, will deliver again. Um, I'll, I'll pick those two out of the, the whole heap. Um, and then yeah, obviously, uh, I'll also then go for Ash Dixon to score again. Henrik, um, your best bet, and oh, sorry, Gerard, you still going? No, no, I'm done, Brent. Okay, excellent. Henrik, let me ask your best bet. And also, has, I, don't, I haven't seen if Three Pete's posted anything on the Good for the Game forum this week, uh, if, you, if you know what he's done. And just to let people know, I have put a link to the Good for the Game forum and also our newsletter, which goes out tomorrow with our with our best bets. That's a free uh, subscription. You can click on the link down below. Henrik, what do you like? Yeah, Brent, also talk more tomorrow morning, uh, minus 15 and a half currently. There was 11 and a half earlier. Um, I, I just said that I, I got some minus 14 and a half at um, 10 to 11 this afternoon, the sporting bet. Not sure whether it's still available, but 15 and a half, I'll take that as well. Otago will win by 20 plus here. Um, three Pete posted earlier in the week, um, but we only had one post early, uh, I think on Monday. Dave has been picking, uh, posting a few times, and Dave has been very, going well in the Mighty 10 Cup as well. So, yeah, the, his thoughts are also, always very good in the Mighty 10 Cup. So, yeah, the guys should head over to the forum. You get some nice value if, if you follow the forum. Yep. And I saw Dave was saying, I think uh, you guys were on the um, the minus of uh, the over six and a half points for Southland. And, and Dave was saying the guys over there hadn't priced up on the points, but Betway and Betex both had points already. So um, uh, some of the overseas boys are going to be trying to open up a few local accounts soon as well. Yeah. Guys, then there's also some international rugby um, on at the mo well on this weekend, starting on actually, which is going to be quite nice, a Friday night game. France against Italy. Uh, France, big favourites here at minus 17 and a half. Henrik, did I see you post, or was it, or was it Southpaw posted on the forum that he liked? I think there was plus 18 and a half at Hollywood on, on yeah, Italy. You think the handicap's too big. What are your thoughts? Yeah, Brent, I haven't seen any teams here, so, so it's a difficult one for me. Um, France, they've been very impressive um, the past two weeks against Scotland, even with their away game, losing by three points against Scotland. Um, they started very well. So I'm a bit, I thought this game was being played in Italy for some reason, and then I would have been all over the place. But with this game being played in France, this is the one that I probably, well, it's tomorrow night at 9 o'clock, so my footing, I will be getting involved. But I, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'll probably do some more research tomorrow. Um, uh, yeah, pushed, I will probably lean towards the plus. <laughs> I don't have a strong feeling at this stage, so I hope Gerard can help us out here. <laughs> Bringing Gerard in there, Arno de Run said Italy plus nine and a half ha half time. I know Brendan O'Connell used to follow Italy on the half time handicap a lot because they used to be a side they could hold their own for a while and, and then generally get swept away in the in the second half. You got any thoughts on this one, Gerard? 
Yeah, Brent, I, I'm going to be, I'm going to be like exactly like, like Andrew. There's no way I, I don't want to be involved, but I, I'll need to be involved. Um, so, um, yeah, I, 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 if push comes to shove, I'll go for the plus. I've seen the French team actually, and I see Pinot, the, the right wing of them, that's actually impressed me a lot. Um, he's not playing. Um, so, uh, but they have Vakatawa that played sevens. For, for France, they have him on the on the bench, um, but yeah, I, I I actually if I if I need to go for something there, I actually like the under fifty one and a half. There's total points. I think that's gonna be that's gonna be something maybe to look at. Um, hopefully, Italy will will get the defence in order and the French will be sloppy. Um, and under fifty one and a half has been uh, the games between these two have been pretty low scoring in the in the in the past. So. I hope that fifth, under, I'll most probably go for under 51 and a half. Uh, unders play, we're going to have lots of those. I think coming into the World Cup, I was listening to Rashi Erasmus talking about the, the expected conditions in Japan, and I'm rubbing my hands thinking unders. I just hope the bookies aren't really onto it. You know, I hope the bookies uh, price up on uh, expecting a few tries there and, and, I, and I can get on the unders train there. Um, Henrik, uh, what's, what's the next game on the card here? Wales against Ireland. Now, this one, I'm assuming there's some. I'm assuming there's some team news here because um, Ireland are what, what are we looking at here? Ireland are actually slight favourites for this game at at Sunbetter based on last week's performance. You wouldn't have thought so. Oh, have you seen anything from from a Wales team selection point of view here? Uh, unfortunately, I haven't, Brent. I saw early in the week when the betting came out, Wales were about three to ten or four to ten to win the game, and now I see Ireland's favourite. I, I'm you know, sorry for being very unprepared on the international. No, that's yet. fine. We can just run through um, them. But yeah, I, I, from what I've heard um, I, on the WhatsApp chats that I have as well, um, Wales probably didn't pick, I haven't picked their West um, side. So yeah, it looks like Ireland might be the bet here. And um, I know of guys that got on the plus on Ireland early in the week, yeah, expecting Wales to not play the best team. Because obviously, um, with um, Wales already having lost Gareth kind of Anskim, they can't really risk um, uh, what um, bigger. Bigger. bigger, bigger, sorry, bigger. Yeah. So yeah. So so um, Gatlin, he probably putting the guys in, in, the, in the cotton wool. So yeah, I think in, especially with Ireland losing as well last week, so they, they should bounce back. I, I always believe in the bounce back as a big factor in rugby. So, yeah, Ireland look a good bet to win this game. Sherlock, what do you think of that one? I mean, Ireland, they wouldn't have... I mean, I don't think the loss to England was a train smash, but it was the manner of the loss. And like Sean says there, they, they must be a bit desperate for a win now because I suppose you, there is something to be said. I mean, yes, it's a warm-up game, but you want to carry some momentum with you into a World Cup. Yes, Brent. I think in the manner they, they lost that game, if it was 10, 15, even maybe 20 points, it would have been something else, but... Conceding what was it, 57 points uh, against the English, and I think the manner that they actually conceded the points, there was one or two good tries, and then a, a, a real couple of soft tries, um, soft defensive tries, and you you don't uh, associate that with an Ireland team. Um, normally they are pretty pretty good with their line speeds and and defensive lines, so I think they they, they would be it will almost be like a Scotland French uh, reversal again, like we had last week. I think it will be the other way around now with Ireland Ireland being up for it. I actually have a, have a look at the teams um, and, and Wales are actually playing two guys that's making their debut. So obviously Gatlin has been uh, going to give his, let's call it the second and a half team uh, a run. Um, and yeah, and, and the, the Ireland team is not bad. Um, the, actually, the pack of forwards is actually pretty pretty decent. Um, maybe this is another one to, to go under. So I haven't seen any quotes, um, but if it's if it's a little bit too high, uh, maybe there is, it can be another under play uh, because Welsh defence is also not bad. Um, so yeah, I think there might be another under play available there if it's if it's early fifties or, or high 48, 49, Definitely under play there as well. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I haven't looked at the head-to-head -head between these sides, but I think if you did, you'd find out you'd find that most of the games are pretty low scoring. And I think the fact that Ireland surely will be knuckling down, trying to get a victory, might make this quite a quite a, quite a tight game. I suppose Wales, the other argument is Wales sort of fielding 
a very experimental side, might not be quite as tight in defense as normal. It was also mentioned in the live chat that it is Gatlin's last game in charge. Henrik, let's move on. Just one more game, and I can see that we can, can cover very briefly, and I'll start with Gerard, in fact. It's Georgia against Scotland. And here I see Georgia plus 10 and a half. I think I saw someone earlier in the chat, or was it on the GG Gaming Show, saying they got on Scotland minus six and a half early in the week. You got any views on that one, Gerard? Yeah, I, I see. I saw the minus seven and a half. I haven't. I didn't see a six and a half, but I saw a seven and a half early in the week. Um, but the, yeah, that, that's obviously off. I think after the news of the Kings game against. Yes, I, I I'm very very disappointed. I didn't get on on that. Ooh, me too. Kings me too. plus. It's the guys made a killing there, and I totally missed it. Uh, I don't know how. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, they were so close in winning that game. Um, and it was in Tbilisi, so it was in Georgia, um, and they actually almost did there and did the job. So I actually like the the ten and a half uh, on Scotland. They made ten changes from last week to this week, um, but I see Finn Russell is still the the fly off, and uh, Laidlaw is still the scrum off. Um, uh, I, I I think they will cover that. I actually quite like that. Yeah, I was just looking. I mean, I, was, uh, I can't remember who came on the good for the game forum early in the week asking questions. I think it was someone actually from New Zealand or one of our overseas uh, posters. And they came out and and I think, yeah, I mean, I didn't even know they were playing. And by the time I woke up to it, the boys were collecting big time. I mean, they backed the, the Kings my, uh, overs points. Henrik, did you did you manage to get on that at all? Brent, I saw the posts on the um, forum like you did and immediately went onto all the bookmakers to see where I could get my bet on. And yeah, the only bookmaker that priced, priced up for the game on the ones I che well, I checked most, and he was the bookmaker who, who doesn't accept bets from me anymore for a few years now. So yeah, I couldn't get <laughs> on. Um, but yeah, I, I also like Scotland in the minus here. Um, I, I I quickly checked the, the teams now on on Rapid 365 while we were speaking. Uh, there's only a, a squat for for Georgia, but. I don't know any of the names anyway. So, but, but, but the, the Scotland team look, looks all right. Eh? It's only um, you know, with Finn Russell still starting, and it looks like a strong team, and um, they will want to build some momentum. So, I think the minus 10 available should be good. Yeah, I saw some minus 13 earlier, so I'm on, also on the minus here. We're just bringing up that good for the game thread. So if you haven't gone on yet, we've got a link down below here. And every weekend, our rugby thread, we do other, we do, we talk golf, we talk tennis, we talk soccer, but rugby dominates the good for the game forum. And uh, just here we got uh, CR Rugby actually came on asking the question. And the guys, you can't see it too clearly there, but uh, Quill also, he's one of our overseas based punters, came on and got absolutely heavily involved there. So it certainly is worth keeping an eye there on the good for the game forum. Gents, is there anything else you want to discuss before we knock off? That's all for me. Yeah, that's also Gerard. all for me, Brent. That's all Good for stuff. me, Brent. Well, you, you've given your Mata 10 Cup best bet. Is there anything outside of that, Kerot, that, that beats a Mata 10 Cup, or are you you sticking with that as your best bet? No, I think that should be the best bet. Uh, I think, actually, uh, between Otago 11 off and Tasman 11 off, it, it, it might be close. Um, but I actually, I, the more I think about it, the more I like, actually, the Scotland 10 off as well. Um, I, I, if you struggle like that against the Kings, uh, and and they did actually bring on the the, the better backline players in the second half, I, uh, they didn't rest all their players uh, in that game. So, I, the more I think about it, the more I like the Kings. Uh, excuse me, the Scot Scotland on minus ten and a half. Scotland minus ten and a half there against Georgia. Well, you know, a guy's a heavy punter. When you talk rugby betting for thirty eight minutes. And just as you're about to finish, you said, hey, guys, you've forgotten about the top 14. And we joked about it last week. I was saying the top 14, I don't really follow it, but I always end up backing it because it's either late at night or the last game on a Sunday. And, um, <laughs> Henrik, I don't suppose you've got to look at the, the top 14, but I, I guess we're going to get the likes of Brady, who I think is based in France, who's going to come out and, and give some tips on the forum, I'm sure. Yeah, Brady, he gives great information. He, he, I know he's based in England, but he is French, so he follows the, the top 14 quite closely, and he all, always gives some good um, advice on, on team news, and he, he normally knows um, when the teams will rest players, especially in the but early in the season, but when they're playing the Champions Cup and the, and that, uh, that he knows when they're going to rest um so yeah, it's always good to follow the forum. You get some great um, information there. 
Um, yeah, but my best bet for the weekend is Greek West Brent. Um, take the plus. They will win the games to take the plus on, on Greek West. Excellent. Just one other thing I want to point out, and I brought up the wrong link there. I actually wanted to bring up the uh, the Super Brew, um, Super Brew link, which I've also put down down at the bottom. And, uh, yeah, if you're going to join the, the Good for the Game Super Brew pool, we'll have a link there. We've also got the pay-to-play pool, so we're all going to be putting in 500 bucks. Now, I haven't really started promoting this fully yet, but I've already got guys entering the league and, most importantly, paying me the money because the earlier you pay guys, the better for me. It saves me all the admin sort of the day before. But essentially what we want is everyone in there, every cent will be paid back as winnings. We're hoping to get 100-plus guys into this pool. Let's, let's play for a sort of a, a first prize of twenty five to 30000 at least, even if we can go further. So everybody watching, if you're on Super Brew, the pool is called Put Your Money Where Your Mouth Is. I will put a link on it uh, in future shows as well. And uh, let's have you on there at 500 bucks each, and, and let's see if we can create a monster pool, something that's going to even make a guy like Gary Lenton of GG Gaming a little bit jealous. That's the thing, guys, for the show. I just want to say, Henrik, thanks very much. I can see you optimistic about this weekend's punting, and I hope it's a good one for you. Thanks, Brent. Yeah, I'm excited for the Curry Cup semifinals, and I'm really looking forward to booking my tickets to Kimberley on Sunday. Excellent. Yes, I think Gary's not looking as forward to booking his. That exercise chain is a pool open to all. First of all, the free link below, yes, no problem. The pay-to-play, yes, no problem. Um, just contact me via Brent at goodforthegame.co.za. I'll, I'll arrange. You can pay through PayPal or something. I do have a PayPal account. So we can have overseas guys entering. I'm just going to obviously look at it from an admin point of view and uh, just see how it goes. Guys, thanks very much, Gerard. It was great having you on the show again. And, uh, yeah, break a leg in the meter 10. Thanks, Brent. Appreciate it. Excellent. And thanks very much, all the guys in the live show. It was a good one. And Hein Dumont, we'll see you, I'm sure, on Monday night for Use It or Lose It. And, I'll tell you what, I'll sit in the comments and, and you can host that one. Guys, thanks very much. If you are new to the channel, please go and subscribe. Otherwise, pop over to www.goodforthegame.co.za and take a look at the forum and our betting previews. Thanks, everyone.